Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back again with another video sponsored by Simon Says Stamp. Today we're going to be using a couple of different products from all to new. I'm using the Best Bud set, the Vintage Teacup, and then for the sentiment I'm using Family Matters specifically because um, of the sentiment that it has. It says everything I am is because of you. And this is a birthday card for my mother. Um, so that sentiment uh, is in fact completely true. So basically what I'm doing is I have some masks that I've cut out. I'm kind of laying out where I want those uh, flowers to be in the teacup. You know, I love putting some flowers in a teacup. I think I've used this set, um, I don't, more than most, because I don't usually have a lot of time to do repeats and I just love this vintage teacup set. And the uh, Best Buds is new to me. So I just really loved it and I thought it would be um, a perfect birthday card for my mom. So I am working on Canson watercolor paper. I am stamping in Barely Beige ink from Simon Says Stamp because I want to retain those lines uh, so I can see where I'm painting. And I'm going to stamp this twice just so I know exactly where those lines are going to be because I'm going to do some underpainting today. So as I go through, I'm just stamping and masking um, so I can make sure that... Uh, you know, the things I want in the forefront, like the leaf in front of the teacup, the um, flower that's sitting inside the teacup, all of those things are going to make sense as I stamp them. So just lining those up. Now, once I got going, um, I kind of realized that I needed a little bit of filler. And sometimes filler sounds like a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I just needed it to be a little bit more full. So in this teacup set, they have this little tiny, um, it's like a little flower branch, little tiny part. But see, I've already done all my stamping and masking. Um, because I'm going to be painting it, I'm just throwing caution to the wind and stamping it right over the other lines. I will tell you that after I painted it, if I had used lighter colors, you probably would have been able to see the lines. Um, so that's just something to think about. If you stamp in a light color of Distress Ink, you will be able to do this and you won't be able to see the lines at all because Distress Ink kind of melts into the paper. Just want to show you here a close up. You can see those lines. I got smudges on the right hand side of my card. One of my, I think it was the teacup, still had some black where like I didn't uh, completely clean my stamp. Don't sweat it guys. It's going to be fine in the end. Uh, here, like I said, I wanted to do some underpainting, so I put little droplets of water to kind of reactivate my Daniel Smith watercolors, and then I'm going to get into the actual painting. Underpainting is when you put down color um, behind the actual objects that you want. So, or if you're doing like a flower, it's like almost like a base layer. Here, I kind of wanted a washy background. Um, and I had to be really careful because it's for my mama and my mama does not like green. Um, but I'm sorry, mom, flowers have leaves and leaves are green. So I had to have some in there. Um, but I opted to do um, like a pinkish yellow roses. Um, and then I did the teacup teal, like a teal blue color. So there is some green in it. Um, but I'm just kind of dropping in those colors. It does get a little bit muddy where the green meets the pink, but because I'm going to be doing so much detail painting on top of it, I'm not even sweating it really at this point. So I'm just going to keep adding that color and remember that um, watercolors dry back quite a bit. So if you want some area that has maybe a little bit bolder color, um, make sure that you aren't too... Um, what's the word that I want? Like that you're not too safe with it because you want to be able to see that pigment. So in doing this, because I was working with a number eight round brush, I also was putting down quite a bit of water. So I just went in with a dry cloth and blotted up um, the extra water. And now I'm going to go back in because when you do blot up the water, you do blot up the pigment as well. And I still wanted there to be um, some pigment that kind of outstretched past the um, saucer and the rose at the top. So I walked away from it. I let it dry. And I just wanted to show you that I also get warping. One of the ways that um, I kind of, I guess, flatten my card back out is to do what you see me doing there, um, kind of like roll it in my hands. But then I also have had really good luck with putting it in a book and letting it sit. I didn't have time to do that this time. So what I ended up doing was putting um, it between two pieces of paper just to kind of protect it and then running it through my big shot a couple of times. 
and that flattened it out nicely and so I could go in and do the painting. So originally I started with a number two round brush. Um, oh, and I made a mistake right out the gate here because remember I told you I stamped that right over the line. So I wasn't really paying attention, I guess, as well as I needed to be. And I started putting the color of the teacup right over one of the leaves that's supposed to hang over the side. Um, so I'm just going in with uh, clean water and blotting that up and just continually doing that until I have as much pigment up as I need. So anyway, I started with a number two round brush and this teacup is pretty large. Um, and so it wasn't really working for me. And I remembered when I did the um, hydrangeas, which I will link if you haven't seen those. Um, when I did the hydrangeas, um, Dawn, my friend Dawn, who does like legit watercolor, not just water. I, I say it's not legit. Like, I mean, like she's watercoloring things from her brain. She's not using a stamp as an outline. Um, she said to use a bigger brush. Bigger brushes are scary um, because I don't feel like I have as much control over the water, but she clearly knows what she's talking about because it did work much better. I kind of kept having to play around with it because I was a little scared um, of, to put down too much pigment. So I kept going over this teacup over and over and over and over again. So as long as your paper can take it and it's not pilling, like you can just keep working with it until you get the result that you're happy with. My problem was I wasn't happy with the shading I was achieving because that leaf is hanging over the cup, which would make that portion darker. And that was the part that I was having trouble with. It, it all looked very one color to me. So moving on, I am the lip of this um, plate would be lighter. So I'm really just adding the shading to the bottom part of the saucer and then just blending it out after I have cleaned off my brush. I didn't say it. I know sometimes it's hard to see it because this time I zoomed in much closer than I usually do because I wanted you to be able to actually see the painting. A lot of times when I'm editing videos, um, I realize how far away it is, but I also realize that I'm not going to be able to fit everything in the shot. So if you want to see my color palette, you're not going to be able to see the painting as close up. I opted this time to kind of just cut off the palette and stick with just the painting. So if, you know, there's something, I guess, that you, a way you would prefer, please let me know in the comments below um, because I'm not making these videos for myself. I'm making them for you so that you can learn things. But anyway, um, so just I'm continually going back and adding in color until I'm happy with it. Finally, I started to get a little bit impatient and just took the plunge um, and went in with some darker color. And I should have just done that in the beginning. Um, it, I liked it much better. I was just scared uh, that I was going to mess up, that it was going to be too dark. Um, and then also I kept going back over it with water because uh, I didn't want the harsh lines. And I think maybe I was overworking it. So sometimes you just got to drop the color in and just let it dry. There's always a way to fix it. Watercolor is so forgiving. Um, so don't do, like, don't baby it like I did. Like, just go for it. So anyway, um, I am going to speed up the watercoloring. This card took me about start to finish. Now that includes all of the other issues that I had that had nothing to do with watercoloring, by the way. Um, it took me about two and a half hours. I was also interrupted by a child a couple of times and sometimes I had to take breaks and walk away. So, but at the end of the day, when I uploaded the footage, I had two out, two and a half hours of footage where I was actually recording. Um, so the whole time I'm doing the same thing, I am laying down that line of color, I'm rinsing off my brush, blotting off the bottom bristles. And if you still have, like if you blot it and you still have too much water, which I found that I did a lot of times with the number eight round brush, um, because it does hold so much water, um, just blot it again. It's not a big deal. Like you'll know as soon as you put your paintbrush where, onto your paper that that's too much water. So just blot it off again and then just use the water that you've already put down. If it's so much water that you can't even work in the area, dry off your brush and then put your brush back in the water. Because if your paper, if your brush is drier than your paper, you will suck pigment back up into the, the, br uh, the bristles of the paintbrush. And so you can remove the water that way. Or of course, there's always the um, paper towel trick. So anyway, I'm going to start speeding that up and let you guys just watch this. And um, we're gonna, I guess we're going to have a little bit of story time. So this card is for my mom. 
Um, I hit the lottery. I hit the lottery of moms. Um, I know that I, I have known people um, who didn't always have the best relationship with their mother, who um, maybe weren't um, as close as they would like to be or whatever. Um, I didn't, I don't have that. My, um, my mom is my best friend. Uh, and I know that sometimes she doesn't know that she, you know, um, you know, like when I take my son over there and I'm rushing from here to there because I have three jobs, um, and I couldn't, I could not survive my life without her. You've heard me say this before. She, um, she makes dinner for me. She sometimes makes dinner for my husband. She watches my child. Um, and I just could not survive my life without her. But, but sometimes she'll say, you know, I miss seeing you or, you know, give me a call sometime. Um, and I don't think that she really realizes that, um, that she is my best friend. When something happens in my life, um, I call my mom. Good, bad, I need advice. I don't remember how this recipe goes. I need to get ink out of a silk top. I call my mom. <laughs> um, and so when I was sitting down to make a card for her birthday, uh, I was going through my stamp sets and that that's how I ended up here. That's how I ended up with this one because um, I have a really hard time mixing companies. Isn't that funny? Um, but the um, the everything I am is because of you um, sentiment just really spoke to me. You know, my I was blessed enough um, that when I was growing up, my mom was able to stay at home with me and my sisters. I'm the youngest of three girls. And um, but even then, she didn't not work because I'll tell you right now, if you are a stay-at-home mom or you know a stay-at-home mom, that girl is working all the time. And But even then, she didn't just take care of us. She took care of other people's kids. We had like a, it wasn't like a, I, I, well, I mean, I now I think you have like a daycare license and everything else. But back then, she just babysat other people's kids um, while we were at home. And then once we got older, um, my mother worked at Ford. She worked in the foundry. My mom slung engine blocks for a living. Like, I mean, she worked hard and then would come home, would clean our house, would make dinner, um, do laundry on the weekends, help us with our homework. Um, I mean, she just, she is amazing. And now as an adult, having to do all of those things that I, that I didn't appreciate, you know, when she, when she was doing them, um, because here I am, you know, not even realizing all of the things that, you know, a 40 hour work week would take out of you. And she, she would get up at, she, she God, when we let her, she would go to bed at like 730 at night, like in the summer, the sun is still out at 730 people. So she's trying to sleep while the sun, like the sun is bright in the sky and, um, would get up at, you know, 3.30 in the morning to get ready for work, work all day, come home, make dinner, um, take care of us. And, um, you know, not that my dad wasn't there, or that my dad didn't work, he did. Um, but my mom, which I have found, I guess, at getting older, uh, is still kind of true, is, um, you know, my mom was kind of the, the, the getter done in our, in our household. My mom was the one who was doing all those things. And I didn't really, um, appreciate that or have so much respect for it until I got older and I was doing it myself because she must have been just exhausted all the time. You know how I know? Because I am, I'm tired all the time. And I have, um, I have an incredible amount of help and an incredible support network in my family. Um, but my mom taught me, um, you know, when I would get in an argument with my best friend, Amy, Amy lived next door to me. She lived next door to me my whole life. We were the same age. We're still friends to this day. We jokingly call her my parents' fourth daughter because she was just there all the time. Um, and she still does things for my family. She's also awesome. Um, I'm really, you know what? I am really incredibly lucky with all of the wonderful people that I have in my life. Um, but when I would get into an argument with Amy and I would come home, I'd be like, I hate her. You know, my mom taught me that, um, you don't say the word hate. Hate is a very strong word and you can dislike somebody uh, or you can you can dislike the things that somebody does, but that doesn't mean that you dislike them or it doesn't mean that you, um, you hate them. 
Um, my mom taught me to be kind and to do things for other people. And it isn't all about just what you're um, getting out of it. Um, acts of service, things that you can do to build up other people. Um, I learned those things from my mom. And I learned to defend other people from my mother. Um, I it, It's funny because all three of us, um, me and my sisters, you know, there isn't a one of us who can keep our mouth shut, honestly. <laughs> honestly. Um, you know, when it comes to what is right and what is wrong, um, you know, I don't, especially when it comes to my, my friends, my family, those people who are important to me, um, I'm pretty much of the mindset, which I totally get from my mother. You can say whatever you want to me, um, but you start messing with my friends or my family and we have problems. Um, and I remember, so my sister defended me a lot when I was a kid. I was, um, I was a skinny kid. I, I got bullied um, quite a bit when I was young. Um, and my my sister's three years older than me. Uh, Kim Kim defended me a lot. But I remember one time, this is, um, <laughs> God, she's probably going to kill me for telling the story. But anyway, it's funny. And it's, um, so there was this girl who wanted to beat me up. She was an upperclassman. I was a freshman in high school. Was I a freshman in high school? Um, but anyway, so she wanted to beat me up and it was like right at the end of the school year. And so summer was coming and like for the first two weeks of summer, I wouldn't leave my house, right? Total scary cat um, because I was afraid this girl was going to beat me up. And so my mom gets wind of it because obviously I'm not leaving the house. And so she tells me to uh, get in the car, Kelly, get in the car. And I'm like, I don't want to get in the car, mom. I feel like this is going to be horrifying. She's like, meh, well, you don't have a choice. Get in the car. So I get in the car. And um, we drive over to this girl's house. They, they lived in my development, in my neighborhood. And we drive over to this girl's house. And my mom goes in and speaks to her mother. And um, the girl, let's call her Sally, because I don't want to say her real name. Um, so Sally's mom is like, um, she's not here right now. Um, but I will have a talk with her when, uh, when she gets home and tell her, you know, not to whatever. And... Um, she's kind of like him and hawing about it. And my mom's like, oh, okay, where's, where is Sally? Sally's down the street at Betty's house. So my mom tells this girl's mom, get in the car. So now me, my mother, this girl's mother who wants to beat me up, all are in the car tooling down the street to Betty's house. So anyway, needless to say, my mom went in, had a talk with the girl. It was, it was horrifying as a, <laughs> As a teenager, it was absolutely horrifying. Uh, but now, as a mother, I can totally see myself doing the same thing. Like, I would not hesitate to be like, Peanut, get in the car. We're doing this. I don't care if it's embarrassing. Nobody's messing with my kid. On the flip side of that, if someone showed up at our house and was like, we have an issue, my mom was always the first one to be like, what did she do? Like, my mom never tried to... Um, lighten the consequences or pass the buck or make things not I mean if you did something you were going to take responsibility for it and that's just how it was in our household and now it is that way in my household because that's what I know um but yeah just I I have such a a, a wonderful uh family and that starts you know with my mom um even now my grandmother this is like Okay, um, so my grandmother has uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, and um, my mother takes care of her. She she takes care of her all. Pretty much, they have they're they're supposed they they split it up. The siblings split it up, but my mom takes care of her pretty much nine months out of the year. She makes her food for her. She makes sure that she gets her medication, she does her eye drops, she bathes her, she does everything, everything for her that she cannot um, do for herself any longer. And she doesn't complain about it. She doesn't um, get frustrated or angry. And if you have anybody in your family or you, close to you that has dementia, you know that not all days are, are good days. And um, my mom does it I mean, she's a soldier, man. And I just admire her so much. 
um, I admire her for the way that she loves people and takes care of them. And um, I have told her, I'm going to start crying on a YouTube voiceover, guys. Woo! Um, uh, if I can be half of the woman that my mother is, um, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing better than well. I'm doing awesome. Because um, she is just, she's all, she's just everything good, my mom. And I'm not saying that she's perfect or we didn't have our fights or whatever. I mean, she's still, <laughs> I was still a child growing up. Um, but she is, she's just, she's so wonderful and so loving. And she's, um, she's such a good Nana. That's what my son calls her, Nana. Um, and she just loves him endlessly. And he thinks she is the greatest thing. I remember um, when he was... Th like three and we were talking about something and um I think the tv show he was watching maybe had like talking about like their best friends and he looks at me and goes uh Nana and Papa are my best friends I mean not a lot of people get to have that relationship with their grandparents I was very blessed that when my mother went back to work um and we weren't at home with them anymore I was with my grandparents um my grand, we actually, my mom would drive us in. We would meet at Bob Evans. This is a real thing. My grandfather would drive to Bob Evans. We'd make the switch in the parking lot, like all the blankets in our pajamas, 5.30 in the morning, sun barely up in our jam jams. Um, and then we would go to my grandparents when <laughs> we could not convince them to let us spend the night because we always wanted to spend the night at grandma's. Um, but I was very blessed to have that uh, relationship with my grandparents. And now my son is also blessed enough to have that relationship with his grandparents. And I am extremely lucky. And this is one of those things that um, is a side benefit of growing, you know, staying in the same town that I grew up in um, is because my family is here. My husband's family is here. They get, you know, he gets to see them all the time and be exposed to, to all of his family. And um, so... Anyway, uh, when I was doing this card, uh, like I told you, my mom does not like green, um, but I was trying to think of the things that um, I thought that wouldn't, would make her happy. It's a card for her. And so um, that's how I kind of came up with the layout. Not that I don't love putting flowers in key teacups because I do, um, but like the, the color scheme and, and those types of things. So... Um, Anyway, now that super emotional story time's over, um, which my mother's going to watch this, by the way. So, mom, happy birthday. I love you. Thank you for everything. Um, but anyway, after most of the layers were dry, I went back in and just kind of darkened up some of the areas that I didn't really love. I um, added some detail work in there um, where... I thought it could use some, like with the leaves, there isn't so much detailing, I guess, with the petals of the flowers, just kind of deepening up those shadows. Um, but the leaves more is what the, where the detail work came in and the saucer. So my saucer looked like it was just kind of floating in midair. And so I wanted to give it some ground. I opted to do um, just a little bit of brown um, and just kind of blend that out into the underpainting I already had going on. Uh, so it would be a little bit softer. And then once I had that where I wanted it to be, I did go back in um, with a little bit of a darker brown and just give it a stronger shadow right underneath the plate. I This color, I actually mixed um, a little bit of the teal with, I think it's permanent brown um, or transparent brown. I should learn my colors. Um, but anyway, so I don't call my mom mum. And that is what is in this set is mama or ma. I don't call her either one. I call her mama, mommy, mom, pretty much it. I'm, I'm a grown woman. That's what I call my mother. Anyway, um, so I had stamped this and I wanted it to say mama and I tried to fix it and it didn't really work out. We're going to fix that later. I went back in and did, um, this is a gold metallic pen from Sakura and so I wanted to add just a little bit of detail to the cup and the saucer. 
So I drew kind of like a little leaf pattern and then I gave it some gold accents on the side of the cup on the top of the saucer. So now here's how I'm going to fix it. So I stamped it, didn't love it. I have a piece of vellum. I put that in place over there. I'm treating that with my embossing buddy. I lined up the happy birthday set or set stamp directly over the one I had already stamped. And then the reason I didn't show you that is because my big fat head was in the way the whole time. Um, but I'm going to stamp that down in Versamark ink and then I'm going to heat emboss it in white. You want to make sure that your heat gun is already heating up before you do this because vellum is so thin, uh, it can warp really easily. So, and it'll only take a second, just like one second to, to do the, the heating up. But, um, so then I'm going to put that back in place so that I can do the mama part because that's what I wanted to say. So I'm going to stamp the mum by itself. Um, as soon as I get these magnets away from each other, that was not my brightest move. Um, but I'm going to, again, treat it with my embossing buddy. I've had my fingers all over it. I want to make sure I'm not going to have any stray pieces. And then I'm going to ink this up with Versamark. And basically, what at first I was like, should I just stamp one M at a time? Um, but what I ended up doing was just taking my fingernail and wiping off that little connector between the U and the M. So then I have that stamped down. I'm going to go back in with the Ma stamp. So they're two different stamps, but we're going to make it say what I needed to say. Um, and so I'm going to go back in and stamp that one so that the M is connected. The two uh, M's are connected. And then I'm going to, again, heat set this. Now, if you get any embossing powder where you don't want it, which I did, um, because I wasn't wiping off the Versamark, wasn't perfect. I'm using my fingernail for heaven's sake. Um, but I'm going to go back in with a um, fine detail paintbrush and just kind of clean that up. I wish I had paid enough attention to realize that that U still kind of looked like an A, but I didn't. So I went ahead and heat set it. And um, once it was dry, I realized, um, well, you'll see. So I have a Versamark pen. That's how I'm going to make it a um, O. So I'm going to take that line from the first M, I'm going to take it up and around to um, connect them. The reason I'm holding it over the, um, the actual card front is because... Um, I already had done this when I used the, um, I actually used Sparrow ink from Simon Says Stamp. Um, but so one, once I have that done and the Versamark pen works just like the Versamark pad. So there's no reason why this, you know, why it won't work perfectly for you. And it did for me. I used the bullet nib. So now it looks like it says mama because that looks like an A. Oh, um, so I didn't want to start over again. I'm going to fix it. I'm taking my, actually my craft pick from, uh, uh, what is that? No, tonic. And I'm actually just scratching it away. I'm being very light handed with it because I don't want to like puncture the vellum. And there was a little bit of residue left over. I cleaned that up with um, actually my colorless blender, which I apologize for not showing you, but I was like in panic mode of trying to fix it. But it did take away any of the residue, that colorless blender. Do that at your own risk because I don't know if it's going to mess up your marker, honestly. They tell you not to color over embossing powder. So after that, I just added some gold sequins and I put the adhesive for the vellum underneath the sequins and underneath the heat embossing. And then that is the whole card. So thank you guys for hanging in there through my emotional journey. Um, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.